So the topic I have in hand today is menstruation. It's an uncomfortable topic for most. You just cannot deny that. There are still people who are uncomfortable talking about it, uncomfortable listening about it, especially from a guy. Uh, so I do acknowledge that that you know. But the thing is, there is a huge gap in understanding this concept. You know, uh, like I don't recollect uh, being taught about. uh what menstruation is what periods are and uh, and i never re- recollect anyone telling me about this it's so it's you know and i think it's the case with most of uh, the people most of uh, the people surrounding this uh 20 to 30 35 uh, age gap people they they probably might have picked up on this information bits and pieces from here and there so that's the case with me too um over the course of time i never had a proper understanding of why of how this uh, uh menstruation thing works and um why it uh, happens and what women go through uh, during that uh, time so that's something i never had a clear picture of but then i thought i think it's high time that i do it's an integral part of a woman's life and you need to know about it or uh, you need to uh, bring it to that sense of normalcy so that uh, it's easily it's it's an easy conversation to have and i think as as a society society as whole i think we have failed spectacularly about interpreting this concept i think we do need to open our minds a little bit and get a good understanding of this uh, concept I think by now you probably might have picked I'm kind of nervous talking about this uh, because it's a difficult topic and you I re- you know just have to be very careful with the words and everything you just cannot risk offending anyone so that's the thing I'm I do acknowledge I'm nervous and I uh, so I'm here with all of my humble and humility and correct me if I'm whenever I'm wrong if there's something uh wrong i'm saying and i might sound a little nervous again but it's uh but i do hope that i don't uh, screw this up and i do hope uh, there is at least a bit uh, information helpful which is coming out of this podcast so now coming to the biological process of it i'm not someone from the biological background so it's kind of difficult for me to uh, explain it uh, with all the terminologies Uh, so there are plenty of other uh, youtube channels and videos uh, with some amazing detailed information so you can go ahead and check those out i'll share some links in the description the one which i referred uh, to educate myself um so what happens is in a sense women usually has troublesome week in a month so those are going those days are going to be stressful for her those days are going to be quite energy consuming for her So I educated myself about the biological process the menstrual cycle or uh, the hormones like estrogen and progesterone uh, the ovaries the eggs the uterus and the process of ovulation now that I know about these things the way I see it now it's it's a wonder of human biology it's so precise it's so intricate the kind of bodily functions um happen inside and i think that's amazing i mean of course there is so much uh, energy intensive process happening and this process doesn't happen in men so it's kind of difficult for men to comprehend uh, the kind of toll it's taking uh, because there is definitely a high metabolic cost associated with uh, a menstrual cycle and only women know how energy consuming it is so basically a woman loses blood you're losing blood right and that's stressful to even think about so that's the specific uh, time you have to be very careful you got to take care of yourself and be kind with yourself so, so that's how women go through this thing and this is kind of disorderly i mean it it gets messy there are certain problems surrounding it as well so it's important to know about these issues as well because these are pretty severe uh so definitely needs a uh, medical care and these are much more common actually so it's important to i thought it was important to educate myself about have a basic understanding at least about these disorders 
uh, which are surrounded with menstruation coming to the issues uh, regular periods are a good sign unless you have some specific set of conditions but then there are some issues like the menstrual pain now these are the hev- this is the heaviness which ha- which you might feel in the stomach and these are the cramps very stiff cramps which are happening due to the contraction of uterus because uh, uterus is contracted the uterus lining is shed so that's the process and that contraction is bound to have some cramps and that can get severe and disabling uh, when it's one of those tough days some women do take some anti inflammatory pills like ibuprofen or aspirin to tackle that pain but most of them uh, don't it actually gets less painful with age so women heading uh, forward with their age uh, they are less likely to take pills the next issue is irregular periods uh, this is when your cycle uh, the menstrual cycle is shorter than average then you have heavy periods now this is when you're losing a lot of blood and this is going to cause a lot of pain and it's really important uh, that you see a doctor if you have quite heavy discharge there's also an issue there's also a problem some termed as menstrual migraine so that's when women actually get migraines during their cycle of uh, menstruation there's one another quite common but quite severe problem uh, quite serious problem that is pcos that is polycystic ovary syndrome this is actually an issue with a hormone called androgen and this is usually a male hormone this hormone starts uh, getting generated in more quantities than usual in a female uh, that's when this uh, pcos uh, occurs you may not have regular periods during that or you may have some periods which are lasting more than average days so it gets very extreme and women do take hormonal pills uh, as the oral contraceptives to regulate the androgen hormone and to regulate a pcos so it's a severe problem it's a common problem in india and and it does need medical attention let's talk about the hygienic protection for menstruation that is the menstrual sanitary products uh, periods themselves are pretty anxiety uh, inducing and the only thing which is standing as the healthy protection are the wide range of menstrual products available it feels very unfair to me as this is totally my personal opinion it's it's kind of unfair about how uh, a sanitary product is being treated as a commodity and not a necessity women are not uh, women don't have option to choose uh, to not have periods it's an uh, it's a natural process it's an intrinsic process but the way it uh, uh, but the way uh, the very basic necessity for or uh, to tackle uh, the issue of menstruation uh, to be as this protection or uh, a sense of assurity um now that is being uh, treated as a commodity i think uh, that's really unfortunate coming to the products you have different kinds of products uh, you have something ranging from menstrual cloth you have reusable pads you have disposable pads which are the most common or uh, you also have menstrual cups and you also have tampons now, menstrual cups are i think it's they are more po- popular with the gen z uh, right now uh, you know or at least that specific age uh, borders um whereas the generation below the gen z that is you know uh, the elder generation uh, they still prefer pads uh, because there's a low health uh, there's low health risk involved uh, with pads and they are low maintenance as they are totally disposable let's discuss more about the way any sanitary product is uh, being interpreted when it's kept in between of a society now nfhs that is uh, i think it's national family health survey uh, the fifth iteration of it they have established a direct link between education wealth and the hygienic methods of menstrual protection it's obviously evident that you know a good education a proper understanding uh, about this concept made available through the basic education which happens in school uh, that's going to have a positive impact on how 
uh, menstrual uh, pro- protection is treated and considered as a priority there is a concept called period poverty now this is a pretty serious concern in many countries what period poverty is it's lack of access to basic sanitary products uh, it's lack of access to menstrual education it's lack of access to the hygiene and the sanitation facilities available this is going to disable a woman from uh, properly uh, and hygienically manage her menstruation and this is a serious issue this there are two aspects of it one is the financial one is the education when it comes to education i mean if you're not educating or uh, even women like even young girls about how to treat and how to effectively manage their menstrual cycle um there is going to be left a lot of gap in the understanding so it's really important that this is being conveyed um, at least informed in on a much more broader scale now coming to the financial aspect of it let's do some basic maths here let's consider a single pad like during a period during a complete menstrual cycle a woman is uh, bound to spend at least 10 to 15 pads per cycle so consider each pad is costing around 6 per average like uh, i'm considering the very basic uh, pad which i think uh, comes at the cost around 40 to 50 rupees in india so if you're taking that into consideration you have one pad on average uh, for rupees 6 and that and if you are if a woman is using two pads a day that's rupees 12 and that's when there is a normal flow and there are around you know there is a statistic a woman spends around 3500 days in her lifetime uh, dealing with this uh, cycle of menstruation that is the menstrual uh, period we are talking about when calculated that amounts to rupees 42000 uh, for entire lifetime you know so basically so basically a woman is paying on an average at the minimum rupees 42000 for something which is natural for something which is so intrinsic that's the tax she is paying for having her periods i think that could be termed as pink tax a pink tax basically refers to the invisible cost of products uh, that women have to pay uh, for the products which are specifically designed to women and marketed to women and i think pads are one of them sanitary products are one of them and uh, so i think it's really unfair that women has to pay tax for having her uh, most natural uh, mechanism flowing uh, inside and uh, a woman has to pay tax for that i think it it's beyond absurd having periods is a natural process periods are as normal as breathing and it's not that again it's not like a woman has a choice to not have it it's much more organic it's much more internal and that's how the supply of menstrual products should be it's really unfortunate like how a very basic necessity is being commercialized this way and uh, by the way all of the menstrual products the menstrual hygiene products uh, they are all available for free of cost in scotland scotland is actually the first country to do that women basically can walk into the nearest pharmacy or stores um the community centers uh, they have there they can just walk into those and get those uh, get some uh, menstrual uh, sanitary products for themselves all free i think that's how it should be now coming to the moment of enlightenment especially for a typical guy like me there are certain things i could jot down uh, like the way guys can uh, be helpful or uh, men can be helpful during the period even the family can be helpful whenever a woman is having her uh, period and so consider this section as a handbook for guys maybe so the first rule about periods is you don't talk about periods with a woman when she is having one period pun intended <laughs> uh, but yeah so that's the thing you you just don't keep pestering her asking her stupid questions about are you having your periods and don't don't ask stupid questions that's going to piss them off and the other thing is if a woman is showing signs of mood swings 
don't ask her if she is having periods i think women have grown out of that stupid joke ages ago i think it's time you do too when, whenever a woman is going through her uh, periods you got to leave them alone but you also got to stay close by and stand by that's also something which you have to be mindful of and and you got to stock food you really got to stock all of those shelves uh, keeping a good amount of food available uh, to eat anytime and be prepared to make a lot of uh, chocolate milk um, or even boil some water uh, some hot chocolate or coffee so be prepared to make those things more often all in all all you got to do is uh, love a little bit more be a little bit more patient than usual and i think it should be fine by the way did you know may 28th that is observed as the menstrual hygiene day a very specific uh, purpose of choosing this day because uh, it ma- it is marked on may 28 uh, because on average women and girls menstruate for 5 days per month and the average interval between a menstrual cycle is 28 days so hence 28 and 5 28th of may so there are multiple organizations uh, working on making menstruation a normal fact of life by 2030 and they have these goals in mind like uh, they like empowering women to manage her menstruation safely hygienically and with confidence without any shame easy or free access to the sanitary products available the total elimination of uh, period stigma everyone everyone has to have basic information about menstruation uh, boys and men and women and uh, girls everyone every gender a good and reachable access to all of the sanitation and the hygienic facilities available so that is these are some goals they have in mind and i totally agree with all of those goals i do stand on the same page for that matter this is all about this is all of all of the data i could collect all of the interpretation i could uh, comprehend from my end and i understand uh, i might have messed up uh, at moments i do i might have messed up with the placement of words probably but i did try my best uh, to get this information out or uh, to share my learning with you guys with the hope like that even a single individual benefits from it i think that's totally worth it menstruation periods like like these need to be normalized now i think it's high time uh, it's high time that everyone is knowledgeable about it and knows well about it and has a logical and rational Uh, thinking about it and for me for myself i definitely do find myself in a much more better position or uh, to to understand this thing to comprehend this thing to respect this thing and be humble about it i think yes that's the ending of this episode so please do let me know in the comments how you felt about the video um, how you felt about the episode as whole um, i do hope you liked it yeah that's all for this one I'll see you in the next one. Bye.